Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me. Tonight I'm going to be going over an install that I just finished. It's an oldie from a couple years ago. This is my Rudy Pando V3 uh, shared stunt from Return of the Jedi. Uh, Rudy Pando, also known as the Spirit of Obi-Wan, put this hilt out, or at least had the run going. He started this uh, in uh, late 2016. They started arriving in uh, early 2017. I think I got mine in April. This was from the first run. He's done two so far. He's got a third one right now, I believe, up and running over on the RPF. So uh, if you like this hilt, I say hop over to the RPF real quick and sign up for his uh, his third run. Um, I did a first impression review of this a couple of years ago, and I kind of go over everything about the hilt itself and some of the accuracies and uh, and how install friendly it is. It just it took me a while to really get this thing going because one, uh, I take my time with my installs. Uh, most of you know who've been following me for a long time. Uh, I'm a one man show. I, I kind of uh, I do have a, a business. Uh, I have a small family, so I, you know those things really take priority for me. And a lot of my side projects kind of get put on hold sometimes, uh, which is fine. Uh, you know I don't, I don't have I don't mind that. I'm not really doing anyone doing these for anybody other than myself. So. Um, and also, too, I was also waiting for a good chassis to come out, and, and Goth put one out, uh, I think, over a year ago that I think is a, a fantastic design, and uh, I'm going to show that off in just a little bit. Um, this is the hilt that went up into space and came back down, and I believe was on display for a while. Uh, it's called a shared stunt because this was actually used with Alec Guinness in uh, A New Hope, and uh, I believe is even as a, a training hilt in some of the subsequent films, and then finally being used in multiple scenes in Return of the Jedi. As we know, Luke had multiple hilts in that film between the uh, the Yuma, which was later converted into the hero. Of course, the uh, V2, which uh, gets a lot of screen time, and then of course the, the V3. So uh, with that, I am going to kind of go over a few things with this. Uh, as I did with the first impression video, you know, just real quickly going through here, so we have uh, a static pommel, right? And a, a bunch of set screws, again, all accurate to uh, to the V3 itself. Uh, the clamp is a Roman, Roman props clamp, uh, again, with the circle cutouts over in here, here, and here. This is a sloth furnace card, uh, ring section. Uh, again, accurate to the prop. This is a, a real copper neck, which I'll talk about in a minute. And emitter. Now, with the V3, there is no blade plug because with the V3, there was a uh, there was the rod that was inside for when they were doing uh, practicing and dueling and stunting, and I believe that that had snapped off or broke off at some point in time, and they just never did anything with it. So, um, the static prop does not have that that nipple on top that we see with the V2 and that we see also with the Hero. Um, so I did do a NeoPixel install. Now, you know, it's really funny, just real real quick, going back to my first impression video. If you guys wanna, you know, um, laugh for 15 minutes or waste some time, go back and watch that because, you know, I, I had to rewatch that a little bit before I did this video just to kind of see what I talked about back then. Um, and my gosh, how much things have changed. I, I, like I said, I think I did that video in like January of 20, 2018. So it's really, it's been three years since uh, I did that first impression video. God, I can't believe it took me three years to install this thing. But uh, yeah, guys, that's how long it takes. It's it's slow for me. <laughs> um, but when I'm talking about that, it, so much has changed. I, I'm talking about doing you know a tri creed. I'm talking about the different uh, creeds I want to use, a different color mix. It like a lime, a green, and like a red or something like that for all the different you know um, for the color combination and the mixing that can be done. Uh, and at the end, I was talking about, I think I was going to use a, a Crystal Focus 9 board or an 8 board at the time. And at the, I think at the very end of the video, I started talking about the next gen boards and uh, the introduction of, uh, I think at that point, it, it wasn't even the Profi, it was um, the Teensy. It was called the Teensy Saber. And that was, we were just getting introduced to Smooth Swing. And wow, how far we've come in three years as a as an fx lightsaber community um the profi board we're now on the v2 uh, v2 2.2 which is what's in here and just amazing the blade styles that have changed in the technology with the pixel sticks that are out there uh just absolutely incredible the pogo pins uh this is stocks his pcb that's inside the emitter here so you have the five pixels 
as well as the uh, these are the short pogo pins. Uh, you sh typically use short pogo pins with uh, thin neck hilts, uh, just because there's not a lot of blade depth. Um, but yeah, you know, I had a big laugh when I was going back to that. I even kind of like almost I almost smacked myself in the face as I'm like talking. I'm like, what am I saying back then compared to what we have now? Uh, just amazing how much has changed. But um, yeah, so glad I didn't do a tricer with this. Not that not that tricers are bad, but there's just so much more that I that I, you can do with NeoPixel. I know I've said that in a couple of videos, and it still rings true to this day. Uh, there is a lot you can do with NeoPixel that you just cannot do with a tricer. As nice and as sometimes convenient as tricers are, uh, but I I remember when this like I had in mind exactly what I was doing with with a tricer, and I believe even when this was made, this was you know almost set to have a nice tricer in it, but. Uh, you know, I'm actually glad that I waited. Uh, waiting made it possible for me to put all the the most current and modern electronics in here. So, you know, with that, I just want to, we'll talk a little bit about everything that's going on. So, um, let's twist off pommel here. And I, I still give Rudy credit, a, a lot of credit for this, because this is such a well-made hilt. Uh, even with the electronics in here now, it's amazing how much the the weight changes of the hilt when the electronics are in it. Uh, it just it feels so perfect weight wise in the hands once once all the electronics are in. Um, as you can see, so here's the Profi Two V Two. This is uh, I think it's a one I think it's that one point three millimeter recharge port. Uh, we've got the kill switch. I'll never turn to the dark side. There we go. A little Luke action. Uh, a lot of Luke fonts on this hilt. Of course, uh, I did put a few other ones on here just for fun. Uh, I think there's a Vader hilt, there's a Kylo hilt. I always put a Vader and a Kylo on. I think on like all my uh, all my Profi board installs, just because I really enjoy uh, one Vader, of course, and and two uh, Kylo's unstable blade. So I typically will put that on there. But this one too, I think I had a mace. Uh, there's some new fonts that I just became aware of recently, and I installed those kind of quick. I you know bought those quickly and put them on here before I did the video. Uh, but the really nice thing about this, let's see if we can get this, there we go. So this comes off, right, at this section here, and voila. All right, so we got my nice little crystal chamber in here. So again, I want to say thank you to uh, Fernando, uh, FET263, for your blade style page. That thing has been an unbelievable asset to the people in the FX community, uh, especially for the, the profi board users. Um, I think I went to town over the last like couple of weeks just loading up all the different blade styles that I could. So uh, even though there's a lot of Luke fonts on here, I tried to change up the green blade a little bit with different effects so that not each font was the exact same blade over and over again. Uh, just to give it a little have a little difference uh, in, in all of them. So just to make it something something special. So with the Crystal Chamber though, he also puts out that coating as well, which is great because then it just basically matches the blade. So whether this is the, it's gonna pulse when it's off. Uh, and this is two quartz crystals. And there is a NeoPixel on each one. That's uh, that's supplying the, the light. Uh, that's on a separate data line. So I have two data lines in here. And then I have the, the pancake PCB here that connects to the pogo pins inside. Let's get the light on there. Inside there. Okay. And then, of course, that's connected to the Stoke PCB that's in here. Okay. So, again, if we turn this on. All right. And whether we. Okay. So everything works. That random blaster effect. Okay. And I just want to say, I am going to toot my own horn in this. This was the best rocker I have ever done in a clamp. I'll tell you what, I'm an amateur when it comes to this stuff. The The rocker sometimes can be a little frustrating. You're always sanding down the board. You're always sanding down the card, trying to get it just right in order to get the appropriate like feedback from the, the switches inside. And usually I'll have like 
one will work really good. The other one, I'm not getting the feedback that I want. I either get no feedback or, or like I have to like really push down or hit the hit a different spot in order to get it to work and I have to keep fiddling with it. I got this on the first shot and I am still in awe about it. So I'm going to brag about it because it's a pain in the butt. And those of you guys who have done clamp switches before know how much of a pain it is to get the rocker just right. So uh, I, I am very proud of that. Um, when Rudy did his second run, he put out a 7 8 inch emitter cap. And so this was this is the three quarter right here. Okay, so this is again this is accurate to to the prop itself. Okay, um, can't really do much dueling with a three quarter inch blade, let alone even just like you know hitting things. So not that I'm doing a lot of dueling with this. I play around a lot with more with my kids than anybody else. Uh, but the the three quarter inch blade, I didn't I knew it's not really it's not going to stand up to a seven eighths or let alone a one inch. So when Rudy said he was going to be putting out the second run, he was going to do a seven eighth blade with it or seven eighth inch uh, emitter cap. Uh, I asked him, I said, you know, is it possible to to grab a second emitter from him? Uh, and he did uh, He did do a couple of those, and uh, I was really happy that I was able to buy one off him for that. So that was that was great. Uh, again, Rudy, thank you so much for the customer service on it. Uh, and I believe now his third run, if I read it right, I believe he is going to be offering both the 7 8 inch and the original 3 quarter inch uh, emitters in this current run that he's going to be doing, uh, which is another great... A uh, great little piece to have. Uh, this way, you don't have to worry about having things separate. The three-quarter inch can go on as your static, and if you're going to end up putting a blade in and fooling around with it, you can throw your seven-eighth inch on. The really nice thing is that because I have this as NeoPixel and the housing is is in here, right in like this upper portion of the copper neck, this can come off, and it's not going to. I'm not going to screw up the wires or anything like that. I can literally take it on and off just by loosening up the set screw, and that's it. It's done. All right. This has it has its own emitter cap. Right, so you can see that there. That's again that that's uh, anodized black already. That has the rings on there. So I think with that, we're gonna get this guy going. Now, the one thing I'm gonna talk about with uh, with the install. The install itself was actually pretty easy. I I, I do have to say uh, I really enjoy the the idea of the NeoPixel, the little pogo pins inside inside the neck here that kind of connect with uh, connect all the way up into the emitter and then you're basically just doing pogo pins on the chassis down in here and then when the when this comes down it connects and when those guys touch uh, uh, the electric electricity goes through and we get the we get the activation the only thing that that my my current setup how I did this was I put if you can see right there that's basically my blade depth okay so I do not have a lot of blade depth in here. Now again, this is my this is my setup. You can actually see on the blade. I want to see if I can get the uh, where the marking is. Well, you can see a little bit here. This is where the uh, the set screw is, where it goes into the blade. So there's really not a lot of blade depth. Now I think that might have just been the way that I set mine up. I have heard since that a few people might have probably done a, a recessed. PCB blade, where the tri the oh my god I said tri -cree, where the the NeoPixel was actually raised up, and you'll see that on a lot of thin necks. It'll actually will have a raised uh, cup inside the emitter so that the blade can slide over it and get more blade depth out of it. And you'll have a recessed PCB inside the blade. Okay, so the PCB on my blade is the pancake here is right at the end, whereas if it's a recess, of course that's exactly what it means. It, the PCB is going to be inside the blade, and the this lower piece is just going to slide right over it and make the connection. Uh, I didn't do that in this. Uh, I, I don't I don't know if you can do that in this. Uh, I think I've heard people that they have been able to. So there there is a design out there. I just I didn't know about that when I set mine up. So I just did it this way. Again, this is not going to be a major dueling blade for me. This is more or less just going to be. Um, a shelf queen, something that I'll take out personally and use maybe with my kids. It can stand up to like a little bit of swinging, but I'm not going to do anything hard with this. Otherwise, the blade will become uh, a little wobbly. Okay. Oop. And another really nice thing about this, hold on, let me get this here. Again, for those who didn't watch the first impression video, the set screw is inside the threads here okay which 
I like a lot because you can't see it when it's on display and then to me it looks much more like a static blade. Although we do know that some of the, the Luke hilts, well the V2 we know for, for certain, had a couple of set screws that were visible. That, uh, that were visible from the outside. And recently, there have been some really clear hero picks that does show almost like a machine mark on the, the lip of the emitter. And it looks like it's, and I, I covered this in both the, uh, the Anakin Starkiller hero as well as the recent Veracity, City Lab, or the Veracity Labs mom hero that there is like a little dimple in there, like a little mark and they think that there could have been some type of set screw that was in there to possibly hold something in, to, to possibly hold in a, a blade. But it looks like it has been like there's been like shavings over it or something like that. It's basically been like covered over, like or filled in. So there there may have been something there at one point in time. Um, okay, so uh, I'm gonna hit the lights and we're just gonna go through a couple of the blade styles and some colors and everything like that, all that fun stuff, just to show that off. Okay, all right. Like I said, there's numerous fonts on here from A Turn of the Jedi. Some really, I just, just love the NeoPixel. It looks, comes up great on the camera. Okay. I hope that's coming up well on the camera. Return and it ain't of the king, it's of the Jedi. I love that intro. That's I'm fantastic. Skywalker. Skywalker, your skills are complete. Oh, this is still green for some reason. This should have been red. Oh no no, this is still a this is still a hero font. I heard Vader's voice and I automatically thought that. Yeah, so this has like the rain blade, so it's like the little drips uh, all over. Vader. There's the Vader one. So here's the red. A really interesting seeing red. On a, on a hero or a Return of the Jedi hilts for Luke. Ben Kenobi? And of course, because it's a shared stunt, you gotta have Ben on there. The original color of this lightsaber was supposed to be blue. Ah, this is the one I wanted. Okay. So thanks to Juan Sith. Got a really cool Mando Luke sound font from uh, episode eight of season two in the Mandalorian, the the rescue. Uh, really cool how people have already gotten this out. Uh, again, Juan Sith, thank you very much. Over on uh, saberfont.com. I'll see you again. I promise. Really cool. This party's over. A little mace action. There we go. Who doesn't love Samuel L. Jackson? Okay, let me hit the lights. All right, guys. So I hope I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, uh, a lot of different fonts on here. Some from uh, from uh, Genesis Custom Savers from Mad Cow, from Juan Sith, from uh, Rigby eighty eight, from Forzy, from uh, Kyber Phonic. He had two new ones: Battle and The Return. But I just grabbed uh, Juan Sith. I have multiple on here. K Sith. I have his uh, his LS6. Uh, gosh, I hope I, I may have forgotten a couple of people. But um, yeah, guys, some just some really great smooth swing Luke fonts out there. If you want to add those to your to your hilts, uh, of course, some other ones. I have uh, you know the Vader on there. Kylo. I think the Kylo Ren is also, I believe, uh, from K Sith. That was one of the first ones I remember getting for uh, for the profi. Ooh, there goes the cat. Okay. I'm gonna edit that out. All right. So the only other thing I really have to do on this hilt is possibly put on some of the, the silver, the aluminum taping that's on here. So if you look at the hilt now, as it currently stands, there is some silver taping on here at certain spots of the hilt. And I'll go over those in just a quick sec. So this 
So there is taping. If you look at the hilt, now it looks like there's silver foil tape around the end of the pommel here, as well as the inside, this little valley in here, inside, the, right below the booster. Okay. Uh, I believe there's aluminum foil tape along the clamp, but you, you can still, I believe the, the holes are cut out still. So you, I think those are still visible. Uh, and then it looks like there's also tape around the face of the emitter here with the exception, of course, of that giant set screw that's sitting in there. Now, as far as the, the copper neck, so uh, Rudy chose to go with an actual real copper metal neck. The hilt itself, it looks like there's, it looks like there's some type of like either copper tape or some type of foil tape that's been spray painted. I've been told that it's it's more or less probably just spray paint and that the, the tape is uh, just the shadowing or the, the, the photography of, uh, of those photos that it's probably not some type of tape, rather that it's just uh, that it's just sprayed over. Um, so you can do that. There, there actually is a, a color out there that I'll post that I got from uh, from Halowax. I have not done that yet, but I probably will at some point um, add those things in here. Just for right now, uh, I'm, I'm just going to hold off a little bit. I have some other projects I'm going to start, but um, this is going to. I will eventually do that on this, and that kind of would complete complete the hilt. So uh, with that, guys, I think I'm going to head out. Um, I do have some things on my list. There is supposed to be a, so, uh, you know, the one thing I, I usually like to go over is uh, what else is out there. Rudy has basically had the only game in town when it came to the V3 for a long time. Uh, after he did his runs, Roman Props, I believe, was selling the identical V3 that Rudy did for uh, for a while. But I just checked his website recently and I didn't even see it on there. The only thing I did see was he is still selling the clamps, the V3 clamps, but I don't see the hilt there anymore. So I don't know if, if Roman's going to do another run of those or not. Uh, probably not right now with Rudy doing his. But that's, uh, you know, so if you are looking for a V3, I'd say hop on Rudy's run right now. Otherwise, you know, you might not see one for a while unless you go on some of the Facebook pages to, uh, to see if anyone's selling them. But um, as far as I know, from what I just heard recently, I believe that the Veracity Labs, who just gave us the, the ultimate mom hero, or the mom of all heroes, is also going to be doing a V3 run at some point. I don't know when, so I'm, you know, I'm not going to speak for those guys, but I would say keep an eye out either on the RPF or on the Luke uh, Attic Support Group page. I'm sure more details will be coming out over the coming months, but um, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. I think they're teaming up with... Uh, uh, LOM, LOM on uh, the RPF, so keep an eye out for that. And guys, yeah, that's that's really about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, this was a fun install. It the, the crystal chamber actually went pretty smoothly, to be quite honest with you. So the crystal chambers can be a little tedious sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of extra wires in there to kind of get your cram foo going on and, uh, and fixing everything up and making sure everything's nice and tidy around the board so that everything fits perfectly. It's... Uh, this actually went pretty smooth, I have to say. I, I really did actually enjoy doing this. And I am still so excited that I got that right. So guys, with that, I'm going to end this. I uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Next on my bench is my KR Sabres uh, Phantom Menace Obi-Wan hilt, which I love that hilt. It's one of my favorites from the prequel trilogy. Uh, when I complete that, I'll, of course, I'll do a video of it, and I'm going to compare it to my, uh, my Parks, my, uh, not Parks, I'm sorry, my Corbanth, Obi-Wan hilt from uh, from a few years back. All right. So guys, uh, leave any comments down below. Any questions, of course, I will try to answer the best of my knowledge. I'm going to drop some uh, some websites in here. The uh, the Fernando uh, Fets263, his style, his his profi style, uh, his blade styles. I'm going to post the website to that. Uh, I'll put the link in there for Rudy's new run, his third run in there. And uh, if I think of anything else, just check out the comments section. All right. Thanks, Elias. Take care. Enjoy.